Hey everyone, welcome to another macro photography video. So today I'm in the forest again, in a different forest than usual, and I'm just going to take you along for another kind of simple macro walk video and show you what I can find, some of the photos I can get. Um, I've got my usual macro setup with me, the Fujifilm X-H2 with the Lawa 65mm macro, the Nikon SB900 flash, and the Cygnus Tech Diffuser. And I've also got the Lawa 25mm with me in my bag in case I find any really small subjects where I need more magnification than the 2x on the 65mm. And yeah, let's see what we can find. Now this forest area is quite cool because there's a wetland area a little bit further along. And because of that, there are actually two newt species that can be found here. Now these newts spend the summer months and when they're in their breeding time in the water. And then in winter, they come out of the water and venture into the forest to spend the winter underneath logs and then leaf litter, which means that they can actually be found underneath logs at this time of year. And right here underneath this one, I've found the rarer of the two species, which is a great crested newt, which are quite rare in general, although they're fairly easy to find in this location. But I'm still always happy to see them. And I'll carefully try and get a few photos of this one before rolling the log back and leaving the newt in peace. So after checking a few more logs, I've actually found both species underneath this one right here, another great crested newt and a tiny little smooth newt. And the smooth newts are a lot more common here and at other locations too, but still always cool to see. This one isn't in a great spot to photograph, so I'm gonna keep looking if I can find another one that's in a better location to get some photos of that species. And I already got photos of a great crested newt, but what's interesting with this one is that you can see the tail is a lot shorter than with the other individual that I saw. And what I think has happened is that it must have lost its tail somehow, probably by a predator. And what's cool is that they can actually regrow their tail. So right now it's just a tiny little stub, but this, the tail on this individual will actually grow back until it's almost as big as it was initially. So underneath this log right here, I found a very, very cool looking Pogonognathelus springtail. And I don't know how much time I have to photograph this one because they're often quite skittish. So I'm not gonna switch from the Lawa 65 millimeter to the 25 millimeter. So in this case, of course, it will be quite a small part of the frame since I only have two times magnification. And if I'm getting a wider shot, what I like to do is actually just place the subject quite a ways off center looking into the frame. So I'm going to find the springtail and find a good angle and then when I've got it, kind of place it up in the top right corner since it's looking towards the left, and then get a stack like that. So underneath this log, I found, first of all, another great crested newt. There seems to be a lot of them around, and also uh, two tiny smooth newts. Now, I was trying to photograph one of them first, and it kind of moved out of the way, so I wasn't able to get any good photos. But there's another one right here, kind of curled up next to an acorn, and I think that will make a really cool composition. So I'm actually gonna shoot this one top down, and oh, there's a pseudoscorpion on the acorn too. That is awesome. Let me just get a quick stack in case the pseudoscorpion moves. And then there's also a little piece of bark in there in the shot, so I'm gonna carefully move that out of the way. There, I think that'll be a nice kind of cleaner framing and get one more shot of that. So a lot of you asked in the comments of my previous couple of videos how I shoot my focus stacks and whether I use focus bracketing. 
and I'm working on a much more in-depth video on the subject and on how to shoot handheld focus stacks. So keep an eye out for that in the next couple of weeks. But for now, just to explain quickly, even though my camera does support focus bracketing, focus bracketing only works with autofocus lenses, and both of my macro lenses are manual focus only, which means that I can't use focus bracketing. So what I do instead is I shoot in burst mode, and to change the focus between shots, what focus bracketing does automatically, I slowly push the camera forward while shooting. So just to show very exaggerated, but something like this. And that way I can get quite a consistent series of pictures to stack and post, even though I can't use focus bracketing. So I've reached the little wetland area, and I can't get very far in because as you can see, the water level is very high, which means that the path is kind of blocked. And I think it would be a little bit early anyway for there to be that much around, but I have spotted a few things already. There's a lot of frogs, maybe you can hear them too, I'm not sure, but there's a whole lot of frogs sitting on the logs and everything, and along with that, a few cool insects as well. One thing that's always around starting quite early are alder flies, which look really cool, and there's actually two of them facing each other on this little branch here. So I'm gonna try and get a photo, and I'm gonna go for a much wider shot, which is why having the 65mm from low is nice and just get my settings right, something like that looks good. And then I think I just need a very small stack. Since I'm at low magnification, there's more depth of field than if I were closer. So I probably only need a handful of shots and something like... Right on the railing of the bridge, I found another thing that's always cool to see, which is a beautiful iridescent blue leaf beetle of some sort. And this is at a slightly awkward angle, but I think if I sort of brace my arm against the edge of the bridge, I should be able to keep steady enough. And then I'll just go for a quick stack. So on this young cherry bush right here, I found a cool little yellowish leaf beetle of some sort. And it's moving around quite a bit, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get a stack, but it's worth a try. And moving subjects like these are where having a fast burst mode really comes in handy. So I can shoot a burst like this for a stack, and even though the beetle's moving around quite a bit, I might be able to kind of get a, even just two or three frames to stack for that, which is still better than a single shot. So the edge of water in swampy habitats like this one is the perfect habitat for one of my very favorite beetle species, Elaphrus cupreus. And I've seen them at this location before, and I did actually just find one. And they're very, very fast and skittish, so I've carefully caught it in a container here just to get some quick ID photos and to show you on video. So I'm going to get a quick shot of it in here just to be able to show what it looks like. And you can see it has those beautiful purple spots indented into its elytra at the back. So I've carefully flipped the container upside down and just to let the beetle onto the ground and I'm gonna give it a minute to settle down. I still doubt I can get any stacks of it because it's very very fast but if I'm lucky maybe I can manage a couple of single shots before it disappears again and that way I've got a nicer background than the inside of that container. So it's still running around pretty fast. Let me see. But I think it's worth a try. And there we go. I'm shooting in 15 frames per second burst, which I can't sustain for very long, but that way, even if I only get a very small series of shots, I've already got enough for a stack. And I'm just gently, if he goes too close to the edge, gently kind of guiding the beetle back out into the open with my fingers. And that, that looks like a decent spot. So 
So as I was filming, a very cool beetle species landed right here among these logs, a black spotted longhorn beetle or Ragium mordax. And this is a really cool looking species. They're quite big and have a very interesting pattern on their wing cases. And this individual was very active, so I wasn't gonna be able to get any stacks. And I was just following it around along the logs getting a few single shots and at one point it stopped moving out on the tip of a little bit sticking out of the log and i thought it might be about to take off and insect or especially beetle takeoff shots are always very exciting so i really wanted to get this shot and i just started firing off a long burst series and i got lucky and it took off as i was shooting just in the right focus plane and I got some shots that I'm really, really excited about. And generally this kind of beetle takeoff shots are so cool because you can see the wing cases lift up and you can see the wings underneath. So I'm super excited about these shots. And it's one of the first times I've managed a good beetle takeoff shot. So yeah, very happy. All right, so that ended up being quite a nice, ooh, there's a damselfly right there. Hold on a second. <laughs> Okay, so that's a nice way to end off a very nice photo walk. I, in general today, found quite a few cool subjects that I don't get to photograph that often. I mean, the newts were very cool, and I'm especially happy about those longhorn beetle shots at the end, and also that was my first damselfly of the year. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more videos about macro photography, and yeah, see you in the next video.